YouTube Oz it going the goat house is back with the Raiders preview what to watch what we could expect for this season and much more players games we'll talk about as well first comment on this video will decide which team I do next playlist on the channel there's also a link pinned in the comments with the teams that I've done so far over halfway through we are getting to every NFL team for the Raiders the main thing we're going to talk about I noticed in this video is some things that people aren't talking about enough when it comes to the Raiders. Some things that they're better at than people realize. Why they can be a little sneaky, a fun, explosive, young team. We'll break it down in this video. Number three, what to watch, what to expect in my opinion is going to be the young improving secondary. And we're going to talk about the defense at number two as well. And the common theme here for me with the defense is that we're going to talk about is I think it's better than we all think. And... I think that kind of was proven last year. Look at it going into last year. What we looked at the the Raiders defense on paper, it looked pretty bad on paper going into last year. Like maybe the one of the worst in football, and it ended up playing way better than that. Way better than it looks on paper. And there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, having Max Crosby, arguably the best defensive player in football, out there is one ob obvious. Uh, Patrick Graham's a great defensive coach. I've always liked Patrick Graham. I think he's capable of being a head coach in this league. Um, I was a little surprised he wasn't made the interim head coach, but Antonio Pierce obviously ended up working out. Um, but uh, yeah, and then they have other young explosive players that kind of stepped up and they had veteran guys that really stepped up. Robert Spillane is one that re that really comes to mind. He played uh, outstanding football for them last year. Like on paper, the linebackers look brutal, but the, you know the guys like that stepped up. So I think credit to Max Crosby, credit to Patrick Graham, credit to these players is um, – you know, having that motor and, and really stepping up. And I think it could be the, a similar case this year, but they should be even better this year. You could argue, yeah, do teams try to find like their weak spots a little more properly this year? Is there more, is there more of a game plan? But um, I think it only should get better. And it starts with what well, doesn't start with it. We're starting with the secondary here. I, I it's only going to get better. You know, people might view the secondary as, Maybe the weaker spot of that defense, but again, it, it, it was better than expected last year, and it should only get better when it comes to the corners and the safeties. Uh, they have all young guys that, I've said it a million times, but should only be progressing. I don't see any reason they take a step down. I don't really see any reason for that, but... I, I, you know, I mean, Nate Hobbs, very solid young player that can play outside and inside, only should get better. I thought he played well last year. Uh, and Jack Jones, a guy they traded for, when he's on the field, Arizona State, the Patriots right away on the Patriots, and the Raiders right away on the Raiders. Like, when he's on the field, he is very good. Like, a very good corner. It's just a matter of him staying out of trouble. You know, not not getting himself in trouble off the field. So, that cross your fingers on that one because that's been his issue all the way back to Arizona State and why he went as late as he did. Um, people didn't really trust him, including myself, you know, based on the past and based on what we were hearing. But, um He's a really good corner, really good corner. Uh, Jacorian Bennett, who was kind of a raw prospect last year out of Maryland and got some good reps for them uh, for the Raiders last year. Athletic freak, only going to get better, only going to progress. Uh, they draft Richardson from Mississippi State, another upside guy, lengthy, athletic. I mean, it's a young group. I didn't get to the safeties yet. Uh, Marcus Epps has been pretty solid in his career, still somewhat young uh, on the younger side, but the Raiders signed him last year, so it's his second year on the Raiders. With this group, only should get better. Javon Mareg, uh, really solid at TCU, and he's been all right for the Raiders so far. We're still wait. We want a little bit more because we thought this guy could be a star safety, or maybe maybe that's a little pushing a little bit, but uh, close to that. You know, another guy that with this group only, you know, with his upside only can get better. So I like this group together. They have other veteran pieces as well, but I like this young group together as they're gaining more experience together and as they are progressing because they all seem to have something in common, like they're upside players that, that could still progress and still can get better. So that that group could be better than it looks on paper for those reasons right there. Uh, then number two, I think the defensive line, it's a sneaky, great defensive line. And everyone knows Max Crosby's great. Everyone knows Christian Wilkins they had Christian Wilkins is great uh, but I think you look at this group and it's like and most people will kind of go like yeah it could be it should be a pretty good defensive line because they have those two studs but what else do they have but I don't think people realize you know Malcolm Koontz really took off last year it's a very solid edge rusher opposite of uh, Max Crosby you know they add Christian Wilkins and I don't think people realize the impact 
I think people understand he's really good. He's going to make an impact. But the impact, him and Max Crosby, Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins, I mean, should be absurd. Like, these are already great players. And Wilkins, I actually think his best football is still coming here. Um, not just because he's going to play with Max Crosby, but just based on the path of, like, the pattern of his play so far, I, you know, he's very polished, stop and run. He's been getting better and better getting after the quarterback, and that's where he's still getting better. Um, so I, I think he's about to break out even further, and that's why they paid him that much because they know they're paying him for the future. And then pair, you know, that he's playing next to Max Crosby, pretty ridiculous. And you factor in that Max Crosby was playing as good as he was already, and now you got somebody legit. And guys have stepped up. Like we said, guys have stepped up in the D-line and played better than expected, but... Let's be honest here. Max Crosby has kind of created those guys. How good he is and the factor that he is and the impact and the, the offense's game planning and, and just focused on him. It's kind of created for other guys. Um, so now he has a proven, legit guy next to him. Pretty crazy. But again, Malcolm Coots, underrated player. They have some depth on the D-line. I'd imagine Jenkins probably starts. They have some sneaky guys that are pretty good depth and rotation. And then you have Tyree Wilson, who they drafted out of Texas Tech pretty high last year. And I just keep going back to my prospect evaluation on him. Uh, and, and if you remember, that was if a team drafts him and puts him strictly off the edge, he's not going to be worthy of the pick. It's too early. Not going to whoever takes him. It's going to be, you know, you have to use him as a versatile piece that he is because he's actually a mismatch inside, but he, he has his moments outside. He just doesn't have enough get off. It was my take off the, off the edge, but you have to use him as a versatile piece. And they started off the year with him just kind of strictly on the outside and it wasn't working. And they kind of made him more of a rotational piece and kind of mixing them in in different spots at the end of the year. We still need to see more if they're going to consistently do that still to be determined, but he looked a little bit better. So I, I think he fits perfectly as a ro key rotational piece on this defensive line. We talked about the starters, especially off the edge. It's Crosby and it's Koontz. And I think Wilson could be a rotational edge piece, but on obvious passing downs, you can put him in a three technique spot. You can have all three of those pass rushers in at the same time. So I, I think it's built, it's built perfectly. Like everyone kind of compliments each other a little bit. And I, I think mainly with Crosby and Wilkins and, and uh, the path that Koontz is taking and, and then the Wilson. I, Wilson could be a high-end rotational piece. He really could be. I And Patrick Graham's a great defensive coach. He, he, he develops defensive linemen uh, pretty well. He was there the early years with Dexter Lawrence and uh, when Leonard Williams was in New York, when Leonard Williams was playing his best football, he was there. So does a really good job with, with those guys. I, I think it's going to be actually one of the better. And I think people realize it's good, again, because the two-headed monster in there. But they forget about some other guys. They forget about the coaching uh, on that side of the ball. And I don't think they realize it's actually one of the better defensive lines. So we talked about it. One of the better defensive lines, star players up front. Linebackers have played better than expected. Um, you know, if they continue to play that way. In the secondary, I like the unit and the chemistry that they should be able to grow. Uh, so now it doesn't it doesn't look as that bad on paper. It's always looked kind of bad on paper, but it's starting to look pretty good on paper. And we know they play better than how they look on paper. So it could be a scary defense here. And they again they played fairly well last year, way better than expected. One of the more surprises I thought in football. And then number one, something that no one's talking about really. I think this team has the capabilities of creating insane mismatch like problems with their receive their weapons, their receivers and tight ends. And I think people will talk about it with Brock Bowers. You know, they draft Brock Bowers and that's one of the better tight end prospects, you know, of all time really. And I think when it comes to Brock Bowers, what do people talk about in his game? Like physical, like tough moves the sticks. That's the number one for me. But people all say, yeah, he's a mismatch guy because you can put him in line. You can put him in the slot, you can put him outside. He's twitchy like a receiver at times. You know, not at quite as speedy, I guess, but he's, he's, he's very athletic. He's twitchy in his routes like a receiver. He's really good after the catch. Um, like who do you put on this guy? But what I, what people don't talk about is they, it's more than Brock Bowers. You know, every team has a mismatch guy that you align in this spot, like who's going to cover him. And I think people realize the Raiders is Brock Bowers, but I, I think it's a lot more than that. Uh, for several reasons, they have, for receiver and tight end, they have an option for every role, first off. You know, they have 
Devontae Adams, a do-it-all, completely a do-it-all great receiver. We know that. Jacoby Myers, who we'll talk about more in this video, spent most of his career playing in a slot. He played a lot more outside last year with still the ability to play in the slot. So you can move him in different spots. So you, you can have him outside opposite of Devontae Adams, and you can have... Man, there's so many scenarios. There are so many scenarios. You can have Brock Bowers in the slot. You can have Mayer in line with Bowers in the slot. You can either one can go outside. Again, Myers can play in the slot, and you can put one of those tight ends or he can, on the outside, or he can be on the same side of Devontae Adams in the slot with Adams on the outside. And then you factor in Michael Gallup, who is kind of got quiet a little bit. People think people are underwhelmed by him when he was getting really good. And I think that's because he's kind of a one dimensional type of receiver. He is a boundary receiver. All of his best plays seem to be along the sideline. He's pretty good at, at contested catches as he doesn't get a ton of separation, but he seems to be pretty good at his job, which is a boundary sideline side possession receiver that pretty good at contested catches. And that's kind of the thing that the Raiders needed. Like they don't really have that. Of course, Adams could do it. Um, Adams is again to do it all. I think my favorite moments with Adams is is with his footwork and kind of getting separation, kind of getting inside, going across the field. Um, you know, he was kind of the first of that, like kind of what Justin Jefferson's doing now, where what he does best. Uh, those types of receivers, like he felt like the first of that wave of type type of receivers, and more guys wanted to be like him, right? But Gallup is that guy that's not going to play an insane amount of snaps. I think he's going to be a rota you know rotational. I mean, there'll be probably games where he starts if depending on the matchup, but he's an outside you know boundary guy. They just have so many different options, different scenarios, different alignments, and it's going to create mismatches. It's going to create when again Brock Bowers. It, if you know in the slot, do you do you put a is he too physical for a slot corner on the outside? Do you try to slide a linebacker over there? And Michael Mayer is such a big body contested catch beast, you know, especially in the red zone. It's like who do you? And he's the guy that doesn't play just in line. He can play ever. Who do you put on him? Jacoby Myers. Like you have to worry about like is this guy going to be outside? Is he going to be in the slot? Um, you know, very polished receiver. It's like there's just so many in Devontae Adams, of course, who actually you know. He can do, again, we talked about, he could do everything. It's just like, how do you game plan for this? How do you, like, understand all the different scenarios? Like, there's going to be a spot on that field where it's probably a mismatch, and it's not just going to be one of the tight ends. It's the receivers as well. It, it, it's, it, I would think the best corner in the field is probably going to be on Adam. So, actually, the mismatches, and he might just be way better than the best corner on the field in some games. So, I guess it's a, technically it's a mismatch. But I, I think rarely it's going to be him where it's like a complete mismatch because, again, the best corner is going to be on him. I think it's going to be the other guys. It's like, God, we're going to have to take a sacrifice here. We're going to have to take a gamble and put a linebacker on this tight end or put this corner on Myers where he's probably a lot better than him and is, you know, and again, he can do so many different things. It's, it's there. I don't know what you call, like, yeah, mismatch team, like a, a different. I don't know what the title is for this, but. The Raiders actually sneakily could be one of the best when it comes to whatever it is I'm talking about. Like what, like the uh, different scenarios, the different mismatches, the different alignments when it comes to receivers and tight ends. And I think, and, and Brock Bowers is a big piece of that because you added Brock Bowers and that kind of was the last piece of the puzzle. Like you have everything now. You have everything. Um, and we talked about the tight ends, and they also they also brought in Harrison Bryant, who's more of a depth guy, but could be a little sneaky, um, and was supposed to be a lot better than than he was. So maybe he can figure it out in a new place. But tough room, really good room there. So uh, the quarterbacks, wh whoever the quarterback is that's in there, whether it's Minshew or Minshew or or, or O'Connell, that was tough to say. Um, they got it made. I think the offensive line should be a little bit better too. They've added to that. Um, I mean, there are still some spots you, you kind you kind of wonder about, but I, I think it should be better. Um, you know, does another question, Cody Whitehair versus Jackson Powers Johnson, you know, the, do the, is that a battle? I mean, both guys can play center or guard, um, should be pretty interesting there. So, uh, but I like, I love, that's my favorite part about them actually is like the different, the varieties of looks that they can give, which is more than just look like it creates mismatches and everything I just said there. Um, so interesting team to say the least players to watch. I'm going to go Zamir white. I mean, big, big season coming up for him. He's the lead back now going into this year. He's that guy. And you know, I thought 
at Georgia, he was really solid, but he's really, he was really physical. The knock on him for me was he hesitated to, to find the hole at times or hit the hole, kind of relied on his power a little bit. And I thought we saw that the first year in his limited amount of snaps, limited amount of carries. Um, but then he looked like a new man, a, a new like an improved back, and we knew he could be good already, so it's not like we thought he'd be bad. Uh, but uh, And he got the chance of starting four games down the stretch, and he looked legit, super productive, home run hitter, can break tackles. Like he actually looked, you could argue, looked better than Josh Jacobs. Do I think he's better than Josh Jacobs? I don't think he's better than Josh Jacobs. But he looked better possibly, and he really got going, was a big piece of that team. So... Uh, is that what we're going to get? Like, if we're going to get that consistently, man, like, it's going to be scary good. He's going to be scary good. The Raiders could be scary good because of it. Uh, and you kind of got to wonder, like, are they uh, you know, run team or pass team then with all these weapons in the passing game? But they got this running back that's doing this consistently. So it kind of can create opportunities there. So very curious to see how he is as the full-time starter. He should be good based off what we saw at the end of last year, but some pressure there for him. Uh, and I touched on it a little bit. Jacoby Myers is a much bigger player, a uh, much better player, I think, as well as people realize. This guy spent his career in New England in the slot. Like, he would play anywhere from 45%, 60%, anywhere in that range of his snaps as a slot receiver, which that is a high, high percentage. So he was actually one of the known like he's a slot receiver. Then he gets to Vegas. He's still spending, spending time in the slot. Now, last year... He had about 25 or so, you know, around there percent snaps in the slot, which still means, yeah, he plays in the slot a little bit, but he spent a lot of time in the outside, and he play, he played very well. He played very well. It's a really solid receiver. He gets separation. He's got great hands. Uh, starting to get a little bit more involved, you know, down, you know, deeper down the field, like in the red zone around there than he was in the past. So. There's multiple reasons he's on this list because he is developing more to his game. He's got more reps on the outside and playing well. You know, that is so he's a better receiver now than he ever was. Here's there is more to his game. He's more consistent. There's been struggles at the quarterback position, and he's still played. He's been very consistent, played very, very well. You know, and again, there's a lot more to his game now. But they also had Hunter Renfro, who they surprisingly end up using a little bit more after the coaching change, and they kept him around. And he he's strictly a slot guy. Um, so there was guys that kind of took slot reps away. Um, you know, and could Trey Tucker because he's a little uh, limited on size? Could he be more of a slot receiver? I think when in his limited reps, he played about 20% in the slot. Speedy guy, you know, that they can use uh, in certain situations. But I think Meyer, you know, it's I. I could see a scenario where he's developing more outside. I could see a scenario where he's back playing more than last year in the slot because there's more opportunities for him. Or is there? Because Brock Bowers could play a lot in there. You know, but it's just, he's just such a, he's better than people realize because he does so much and he's a really good separator. And again, great hands. You know, so it, he can do one game, he can do one thing, or he can do both, or he can do the other. Like It's just there's endless opportunities with Jacoby Myers, and I think he's actually a mismatch guy. We talked about it. He kind of creates more of the mismatch opportunities than maybe Brock Bowers, who probably people view as a mismatch lord you know, than he could be for this team. Uh, but Myers is, is a lot more important and a lot more key and a lot better and a lot more of a tougher game plan than people realize. So I'm looking at, I'm curious that his reps inside, we know he's gonna need a lot of reps in general, but inside and out, where is the effect or more? Very curious. He, 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 there's more to his game now. People got to realize that. And number one, I'm gonna go Max Rosby. And this is unlike me with the, with these players, the watch list, because you typically the guys that we know how good they are. We know what we're going to get from that, from them. I don't put on this list because are they like, are we that curious about them? So usually I don't do that. Mac Crosby, we know he's great. We know he's elite. We, we, we know how good he is. We know he's going to be great this year. But I think he's the best defensive player in football. I, th I think he wins uh, defensive player of the year. Right now it's my prediction, defensive player of the year for this year. And I'm going to roll with that. I predicted at this time last year I predicted Miles Garrett to win. And it's this time the year before I predicted Nick Bosa to win. Uh, but I predicted Miles Garrett to win last year. But at the end of the year, my pick, my I didn't think he was going to win, but my vote was for Max Crosby. I watch as much football as anybody. I watch an insane amount of football. I know a lot of you watch the same amount out there. What I watched 
was Max Crosby being the best defensive player in football last year uh, on in every way. Like he's involved in every part of the game. He's a factor in every way. You, teams fear him, and not that they don't fear Miles Garrett or T.J. Watt or Micah Parsons, guys like this. But Crosby was just so much more involved, so much more of a factor, so much more of a motor, uh, so much more of a presence to me. And I think people are kind of basing things off sack numbers, but he has great sack numbers as well. I mean, the numbers, the numbers are great. Tackle for loss leader was he tied with with uh, you know at the top? Um, I think Daniel Hunter was up there. Uh, but that if you want to go stats, that is an insanely important stat. But I am not a huge stat guy. But that meant something to me. Just Always ca- causing a problem. Teams running away from him. Him getting across field. Making a play downfield. It's just what I watch. Just watching football. That was the guy that stood out more than anyone else. Um, and, and going into the like the award, it was like no chance for Max Crosby. And that was a shame. That was a shame. That was my pick for the winner. Not that other guys did, like Miles Garrett didn't deserve it. They're definitely deserving. They're good enough. But... Crosby needs so somehow this guy is as good as he is and he gets credit, but somehow he's a little underrated, I guess. Um, it's crazy. So I, I think, I, you know, well, how he played last year is good enough to me, but I think he actually can get better because he seems to be getting better. But you factor in, it's a big piece, reason why, big piece why he's number one here, Christian Wilkins. I almost put Christian Wilkins up here because he got that big contract. He's the guy that's still getting better. How is he going to be next to Max Crosby? But I think Christian Wilkins plays around where he played before. He could play a little, I think he'll play a little bit better. I exactly know what I'm going to get from him. Max Crosby, I think because where he's already an elite player, easily elite. If you don't think so, you're wrong. Um, and he's on path of getting better. And now you add a big something he hasn't had a big time interior piece inside, uh, right, right, you know, next to him. Uh, I, he's so uh, Crosby should play out of his mind this year. So uh, that's becoming my pick to win to win defensive player of the year. Hopefully they give him that 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 uh, if he's deserving. Hopefully they give it to him. Um, so I'm really excited about him. One of my favorite players to watch in the league. Games to watch. I don't know if they had any of that like. Really like, yeah, that's the game. Mark that on your calendar. I mean, some teams have that. I mean, I like the I like the divisional games because they always give the Chiefs problems. I just kind of had a rule for myself: don't put the divisional games because no shit, they're the games to watch. Uh, the Chiefs. I like the Chargers game. The Week One, they play the Chargers. Uh, you know, I think with uh, you know Harbaugh, you know, and his you know mentality, like you know, physical football. I think the Raiders could match that. That's just kind of my take there. I think it's a really good matchup between the two teams and that start right off the gate in week one. Um, so I, I love the divisional games. How about the Browns in week four, you know, after the first few weeks that are usually sloppy league wide, kind of kicking into gear here. Um, I, I they have similar play styles. It's a Max Crosby versus miles, miles Garrett uh, battle here too, but Similar play styles, I think they you know you're not going to see a ton of airing it deep for these teams. Just be we try to out physical our opponent, um, get the ball in space a little bit. We're going to pound the rock quite a few times. Uh, good good defensive fronts, pretty good, tough defenses. So I, I I think that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good battle there. Then uh, how about the Dolphins in Week 11? You know, kind of, it, that's right after the bye week for the Raiders, so that'll be huge so going that last stretch of the season. Are, are they fighting for a wild card spot? Are they fighting for something, some playoff spot there, a seeding, uh, trying to keep the season alive? Whatever it may be, that'll be a huge game. It's a Christian Wilkins revenge game, I suppose, uh, in Miami. And the, it's that's kind of where the range after the bye week, you know, down the stretch, that last stretch. It's where the Raiders kicked it in the gear last year. Do they do it again? It's kind of where the Dolphins were, you know, because the beginning portion of the year, we're like, is this one of the best teams in football? And at this point, it's like, yeah, it's a good team, but they're starting to come back down to earth. Some injuries occur. Will they be healthy? You know, so it'd be an interesting matchup. And the Saints at Saints, week 17. Either of these teams, you know, if they're fighting for a wild card spot at this point, it's going to absolutely going to be a must win for both these teams. So it should be a battle. It's also a Derek Carr revenge game, Raiders versus Saints. Um, I view both these teams the same in regards, uh, in, in terms of, uh, like, I don't know if anybody views the Raiders and Saints as a threat. Like, other fan bases, other, I'm not really talking about teams, but other, yeah, just, uh, Anybody talking about football? Like, they, nobody really thinks the Saints or the Raiders are going to be great. They know they're not bad teams, but they they're tough, tough team. And they're both can be better than people think. But they're they're 
for teams, I bet teams view them differently is what I'm trying to say. They are teams that will, you have to grind it out against them. I, I view both those teams like that. Like the saints, like no one thinks they're going to win a ton of games, but they, you, you got to know, like they're going to keep games close. They're going to play tough defense. You know, they got weapons on offense and the Raiders, like that's what they did last year. They kept, they grinded it out. They kept games close. They squeaked some by, they had some impressive wins as well. Uh, but even ones they lost, it was super close. Great defensive battle. The Vikings Raiders game. I remember that game. Like that was an all out defensive war. Um, like these teams will make you work. Like these will never be, even if they're struggling record wise, they will never be free wins. Never. It feels like. So um, that's another reason I think that's a good battle there. The Derek Carr thing in the week 17 is one or both these teams fighting for a wild card spot. If neither are, then this, it's not a great game then I guess, but uh, which is any of those is possible. They both be fighting. They both can't, maybe won't be. I don't know. We'll see. It's, it's it'll be a lot of fun. Fans takes astronaut full season of Pierce head coach. Yeah. We, I didn't actually touch on that. I haven't touched on that yet because he took over. And it was a whole new team. It made you wonder like if he was the head coach all year, and not and not dip ass if dip ass wasn't there especially maybe maybe it didn't need to be Pierce maybe it just can't be McDaniel's because uh, he is that terrible. Uh, but if Pierce was there all year as the head coach, they make the playoffs right. It had people wondering like oh like what if you know so um, hopefully they continue. I guess it's a question like sometimes we see it where there's you know. Teams kind of get going. To, okay, they, it's a wake up call when they switch coaches. Like there's a fire lit beneath them, and they get going. Like, does it carry over? So I guess a little bit of a question there. Uh, Minshew versus uh, Aiden O'Connell. Yeah, battle. I, I think the way they paid Minshew, not not that it was like an insane amount or anything like that, but I think they planned for him to be the starter, and they tried to trade up for Jaden Daniels. My thinking, and there's a lot of buzz about O'Connell like looking good. I mean, it's hard to judge off right now, but I keep hearing things that he is in line to be the starter. I'm not buying into that right, really right now. Based on the approach, I feel like Minshew's going to be the starter. Um, and is he better than day one than O'Connell? Yeah. I wouldn't expect him to be like the – I thought that system was fit Minshew ball pretty pretty well, but he does have the weapons, and, and we talked about it there. Um Personally, I would see what O'Connell has. I would see if he can he can progress. That's personal preference. Not that I feel like very strong. Like I don't have a strong opinion on that. I guess, but I, I'm my money would be on them starting Minshew. But how many games does he play? Is he the same as he was in Steichen's offense? We'll see. It's mere White running back room without Jacobs. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. But we kind of talked about it. Will White kind of? There's a lot of. There's a lot here. Will Pierce in the energy that team have? And the wins they got, will it carry over or did it die down? Zamir White, how he ended, will it carry over or does it die down? Um, the defense playing far better than expected, how it looks on paper. Will it carry over? Will they get even better like I talked about? Or will they kind of get figured out and kind of get exposed maybe a little bit as we thought they would last year? I'm not saying that's the case, but a lot, there's a lot of questions. Do things carry over? Uh, utility of... Yeah, usage of the tight end slot position we talked about. That was a big thing for me. Uh, yeah, you mentioned some of the offense lineman consistency. I think it could be better. Very curious to see who wins that, you know, who the starting group ends up being. Wilkins pairing with Mad Max on the line helps Tyree Wilson too, perhaps. Yeah, we talked we touched on that. I think Wilson's in line to be like a high end rotational piece, uh, because he can fit in uh, on the edge or inside with this group in key situations, and it could create production, and especially with those big guys next to him, and he can eventually turn into a starter, but they, they're pretty set off the edge. That's what Wilson is. Like, that's what he was coming out of Texas Tech. People didn't realize that. Like, he wasn't just like a, yeah, he's a plug-and-play starting edge rusher. Like, to me, that's not what he was. I taught, I preached it. Like, you know, he is, he is a guy you have to mix in and, and use in different spots and different scenarios, and he actually is – like high end in that category, like he can be, because um, he's actually a mismatch problem uh, in specific situations. So if he he's a guy that actually could be his career, like not saying this would be the case, but his career he can always be like that number one rotation guy, which doesn't really sound like a great thing for a top pick, but he can be like the best in football in that in that role. So we'll we'll see um, what happens with him there. So. It, very curious to watch uh, Nate Hobbs improvement. 
Yeah, it's a solid physical corner that could play inside, outside. Jack Jones continue to progress under Graham. Yeah, it's just a matter of staying on the field with him. Linebacker duo, it's Blaine and, and Diablo. Remember, Diablo was a safe, safety turn linebacker, so he could uh, kind of improve a little bit with more, uh, more experience, more seasoning. Can they play to the heights, their heights of last year? Yeah, we touched on that. Like... One part of me is like they got to be better, right? Because they've added a big piece. They've they guys got a ton of guys getting better and growing, progressing and gaining chemistry. Um, but then, yeah, do they kind of get figured out? I guess that's a possibility as well. Cam Sullivan, don't have any questions. Uh, Raiders only win a few games before the trade deadline. They end up trading Adams in what becomes a rebuild year. Yeah, that's another take on it too. That's very like if they're struggling, do that. You know, they probably should. They probably should look to trade Adams if they're struggling, and just because he's not going to be like part of their their long term futures. It's still what they're kind of looking at. Uh, we see Minshew much earlier than expected. AOC takes a backup role for the majority of the season. It's kind of my prediction, but hearing good things about AOC lately, despite not being all being all on him, a long a losing season means Pierce is replaced before the start of next season. Yeah, it's a little bold. But if they were really, really bad, maybe they're like, yeah, the interim coaches don't work out. It was kind of the fluky thing last year. I don't know if that will be end up being that. It's pretty bold. I don't know if that will be the case, but I guess you could see a scenario where it happens. Raiders end the year with a top 10 draft pick. So you think they'd be targeting a quarterback. They tried to last year. Then they'd be targeting one this year. Um, we'll see what happens in college football this year. And Adam, how, how will Minshew look going from Steichen scheme? Yeah, I touched on that. Getsy got a lot of ripping in Chicago. I do think he was trying to game plan around being a little limited. Fields Fields deserved a little bit more of the ripping than Getsy, but the fans didn't really want to do that. Obviously, Fields could run, but he's very inconsistent finding open targets and being a consistent passer. So Getsy was trying to like adjust his... I think his playbook was like this, and it ended up like this. I think it would happen. He tried to adjust on the fly to Fields' strengths because in the beginning of the year, they're like, all right, he's going to develop as a passer. And it didn't really happen. Um, so it's tough to say. Uh, but I, I, Minshew, I really fit, he really fits Steichen's offense. So I think better than Getzies, I think it will end up being the case. But he has some players that really fit. Like, you know, Bowers. Again, the, the mismatch guys we talked about. Like, it should be really simplified for Minshew. He should be able to roll out and get those guys the ball underneath. It's a really, Minshew and Bowers, like, really fit, like, the play style there. So... Maybe that makes up from losing Steichen in Minshew's mind there. Uh, will Zemir White continue to improve? Yeah, that was a big question for me. Does he continue where he left off, which was insane? How the Titan rotation with Bowers and Mayer look like? Bowers is going to be the guy, um, but we can see both of them on the field quite a bit because they can both do a bit of everything. Like, I think we could have times. It's crazy. You think tight ends, you think in-line tight ends. Even though new school tight ends are starting to play outside, inside, uh, or in the slot. Um, but I think we actually have times where Bowers in the slot, Mayer's outside, like right next to each other. It's gonna be like it's gonna be it's gonna be weird, but it's gonna be awesome. Will teams have a better game plan for the defense? Yeah, we kind of touched on that. Big question there. Take Minshew is below average. The defense comes back down to earth, and they finish five and twelve. A little harsh, a little bold. Um, not I, maybe it's not super bold because uh, Minshew could be below average, like at times he's been in the defense. I think the defense is going to be solid. If you have Max Frosby and Christian Wilkins, I think it's bound to be solid there. But they do they have some tough opponents in the division. Well, with the Chiefs and the Chargers. Uh, RS Swimmer, Ian O'Connell wins the QB job and finishes second in passing yards in the division. Whoa! That's bold. So, I would imagine you're saying ahead of Herbert. Uh, that's that's pretty bold. Maybe, thinking, maybe he's thinking Harbaugh's just going to pound the football all day. I don't really know if that's going to be the case, but yeah, this is super bold. Um, I think Minshew wins the job, but I'm not like 100% on that, not guaranteeing anything, but we will see. O'Connell definitely can win it. Uh, but I don't think he finished the second passing yards division. Uh, who do you see winning the QB battle? I talked about that, Minshew. Uh, and which do you think would be the better long term? Definitely O'Connell. Like, if it was my decision, I'd probably. I'd have to see them. I'd have to be in the room and be on the field and practice preseason, whatever. Um, but I right now, like, where's Minshew really going to – it's a good fit. Ah, it's, it's tough because I, I do think Minshew probably plays better. So don't you want to start the guy that plays better? But O'Connell could grow. I want to see where he got to and if he could be the guy. I think they know he's not going to be the guy. If they sign Minshew to that contract and they try to trade up for Jane Daniels, I'd, I think they kind of know. So that's a tough one on who I would pick. I, I need to be in there. I need to be in there. 
Um, I really think Minshew's going to be the guy. That seemed to be the approach in the offseason uh, to replacing O'Connell, but we'll see. Whoa, whoa, where am I? What do you see this year, recently with Tyree Wilson? Yeah, we kind of touched on I think a glorified rotational piece. Have to use him right. Can't just... You can't just have all the snaps off the edge. That's not him. That is not him. I turn second. I turn on the tape at Texas Tech. I saw that he is not strictly an edge player. He's honestly probably better inside because he's strong enough, long enough, physical enough, has that motor. I really he doesn't have the get off off the outside. Could it could the get off the timing get better? Sure, but it's not something that you see a guy change much even once they're in college to the NFL. It's kind of something coming up that you have or you don't. It's weird. Uh, and it's a big part of the edge. And I think that's his number one problem. Um, and maybe we're just relying on length and physicality out there, which is usually a good thing, though, like if you have that, and he does. So he can get better off the edge for sure. Um, I, I just really hope this year, I think perfect opportunity to be a high-end rotational guy. Uh, come in on obvious passing downs uh, and play. You can have... You could have Crosby, Crosby, Wilkins, Wilson, Koontz on obvious passing downs. I freaking love that. Um, and he if and again, you have Crosby. I, Crosby's not gonna need a breather really. If Koontz needs a breather, or if he's not playing well, you put Wilson out there. Um, you know, the two for one special on a high end rotational piece. So I think that is where he's gonna make his money and eventually turn into a starter and finding that role. Um there's some teams that out there that they would just start him at like a uh, D tech, like three technique when they, your teams that really value that. Or if he was on a three, four team, would he play DN for those teams? Um, and there's some teams that would give him a shot in the outside, but he's got to develop a little bit more on the outside. But I, I think he's in a perfect role for this year. And it's, and it's, I said it a million times being a high end rotational piece. Like we can't put the high expectations to put it. You know, I think it's unfair to say he's going to be a starting edge rusher over the two good edge rushers they have. Um, and be great right now. I think that's unfair. I think he's in a perfect spot to kind of ease back into it and be a key piece at the same time. So we'll, we will see. But definitely a young player to watch. So it's a fun player if used correctly. Uh, but that will do it for this one. A lot of fun. Uh, we have a bunch of teams done. There's a link pinned in the comments for the playlist. You also can go to the channel and find the most recent playlist, and that is... Uh, this series with all the teams that we have done. Uh, make sure you check out our Twitter to play along. Link in the comments for that, as well as our sponsors, GLD Shop Liquid IV, code GOAT for a percentage off. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.